it's amazing that I was able to do work, master's, CPA, and I legitimately still, like, I would occasionally still go do stuff with my friends. I did stuff with my wife almost every night. I always got to see my kids mm-hmm. every night. Like, just the efficiency that super fast CPA brought me was uh, invaluable in that in that <laughs> sense. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the CPA Exam Experience Podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's episode, you're going to hear me talk with Logan. The first thing I remember from Logan is that he had posted in our members forum when he first joined Superfast CPA, and the title of his post was Too Ambitious with a question mark. And then he laid out his plan that his goal was to pass the four exams in four months, you know, using the Superfast CPA methods and study tools. And then... Each exam he would post, you know, that he had passed, and he did exactly that. I think it took five months total instead of the four months he had laid out, but he did go four for four, and he's a busy guy. He was finishing his master's while working full-time, studying for the CPA exams, and he had has two kids that are young, I believe two under the age of Three. So a two-year-old and a 10-month-old. I've got his final post up right here. And he would still spend the evenings hanging out with his family. So he nailed the process exactly. He would do two hours in the morning, do the mini sessions from our app throughout the day. And that's all it took. He passed all four on the first try in five months. And so in this interview, you're just going to hear exactly what he did step by step. He had his own take on a few things And he just has a lot of really good tips to share. And overall, you know, you just get a glimpse into this is what someone was doing that passed in five months, went four for four, studying just two hours a day. You know, he still had, he mentions, still had time for hobbies. He still had a life, basically, doing everything else. CPA exams, working full time, and finishing his master's. And a family with really young kids. So, You will learn a lot from this interview. Before we get into the interview, I just want to mention our free CPA study trainings. So these are one-hour webinars where we walk through our six core study strategies. These trainings are completely free. I've even heard from multiple people over the years that never even bought our products because they watched this free training and just got a few of the things immediately made them realize what they were doing wrong in their process, and that's all it took. And then they passed emailed me a few months later, you know, I'd never heard from them previously. And they were just saying, I just wanted to say, thanks. Your free training was so valuable that it turned everything around for me. I never even bought your products. So these one hour trainings are extremely valuable, extremely helpful. If you're wondering where to start with super fast CPA, that is the place to start. So the link to those will be down in the description of either this YouTube video or the podcast version. So with that out of the way, let's get into the interview with Logan. So when you started studying for the CPA exams originally, yeah, how did that go? Did you just start, you know, the normal way? How was it in the beginning? So, um, luckily, when I before I had started my exam process, um, Parker, who you've met, uh, he's my one of my best friends, and we're both in the accounting program together. And I was about to start my first semester of the MAC. And he was uh, thinking of starting studying for the CPA because he knew I was about to start. Um, anyway, uh, so he saw one of your ads, I think, on YouTube. That's right. Um, and he watched uh, one of the, uh, I think he watched your webinar. And he, we were hanging out at one point after he watched it. And he knew I was about to start studying. And he was, like, telling me all about it, like, he mainly just told me like the two hour idea <clears throat> and in my brain that instantly it was like, that sounds a million. Cause I had heard horror stories, you know, about people studying for four hours after work every day and then still failing exams and just all this terrible stuff. So, uh, when he told me about that, I was like, that sounds like the way to study. But I, uh, like I went and looked at the, uh, at it and I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy it yet 
like the basically what I did when I first started is I did this strange hybrid uh, study plan before I actually bought super fast CPA because I knew about super fast CPA but I didn't actually have the product so I <clears throat> was studying two hours a day but and I was trying to do what I understood of the questions first approach which was what I did is I would I had the Becker I was studied audit first and I, so I got the Becker book and I would go to the questions and try to find the topics that were that sounded like they were being tested well but then I would only do that for a little bit and then I would go watch the lecture and then I would you know like it was just this kind of a strange hybrid from just based off my understanding from what Parker had told me and uh, man I, I really did not like watching the lectures <laughs> um, I might mention this a little bit throughout the throughout this interview but I have ADHD and I found out I had ADHD after I started studying for audit mm. and uh, anyway that that might come up a little bit more later just like how much stuff changed with that but anyway yeah that was pretty much how it started just this weird hybrid it wasn't the most effective I was like highlighting the book like they were telling me to I was watching the lectures but then I was trying to do the questions first approach so like but it wasn't like I didn't feel like it was extremely effective. Like I would still get to the questions after watching the lecture and be like, what, did they just teach me this? Like it, it didn't, it didn't click at all in my brain. Uh, so that's kind of how it started anyway. That was how my process okay. was. And so did you do uh, the whole audit exam like that? Um, no, I got about, <clears throat> so a little bit before getting about halfway through the material and I was doing all the material. I was doing the lectures, the sims, the questions. I was getting the 80% and above, you know, like you're supposed to. Uh, and, uh, and I had at one point signed up for an email list of yours. Uh, I don't even know where I found it, if it was on the app, because I've tried to find it again later, like to get on an email list and I haven't been able to find it again. So I'm not entirely sure where it was, but, uh, you had a fall, deal going on where you could get the whole package for five hundred dollars and i was like i saw that and i was like should i buy it should i buy it and like i was going back and forth and i was like you know what i'm just gonna go for it and and i so i bought the whole package for that with the which you know long story short that was like the most important purchase of uh of my whole cpa uh journey but um yeah, so that, I bought that um, after I was about halfway through audit, and um, but I didn't actually get to start using my stuff because something was wrong with my account for like the first like two weeks of me uh, by after buying oh, it. So I had I access. I, know to, I had I had access to the <laughs> app, but I couldn't watch the pro course videos, and I didn't want to really use super fast CPA until I watched the pro course videos because I. I had already tried implementing my understanding and it wasn't very good. So, um, so yeah, so I bought it, but then I, uh, it took about two weeks for me to actually start using it. Um, yeah, so I bought it, uh, yeah, or about halfway through audit and then totally, I just totally revamped my whole study process. <clears throat> um, uh, I had been studying, uh, two hours. So, Maybe just a little bit of backstory will help so that you can so that people can understand my uh uh like my work situation so when i uh I finished my undergrad, I got an internship at i Bailey as a tax intern worked there I kind of forced them to give me a job early they hadn't decided on keeping any associates yet, but I had gotten an offer from another company. And I was like, listen, I'm going to, I have, if, if there's no guarantee of me staying here, then I'm going to leave. Uh, but, so I kind of forced their hand, but they only gave me part-time. So I was only working 20 hours a week, which in the end actually worked out great because of my master's program. And I can maybe talk about that later. But um, anyway, so I was only working 20 hours a week. So I would work five hours and then I would go to school and study for two hours and then I would go to class. Um, and so I finally started, uh, doing the two hours, um, uh, effectively once I popped the material and I like totally revamped my study process. 
anyway, sorry, I feel like I'm uh, rambling a little bit. So, <laughs> yes, well, I got a, yeah, I've got a question. So based on your, you know, hybrid version of whatever you were doing previously, mm-hmm. and then when you watched the pro course, the actual, you know, you actually got in there and watched it, mm-hmm. what were the main things where you were like, okay, that's clearly different than what I've been trying. What were the big things that added on to what, like the halfway version you were already yeah. doing? I think the biggest thing was my focus on the questions. Like before I thought I was focusing on the questions first approach, but what I was really doing was just kind of trying to snip a couple, um, a snip a couple topics from the questions and then go watch the lectures to see if I could find those topics mm-hmm. throughout the lecture. Um, but once I watched the, le- the, the pro course, I actually stopped watching lectures and I never watched lectures again. I'm not saying that people shouldn't, you know, I I know you don't say that you should never watch lectures, but for me, it just was like, I was, I knew it wasn't effective for me. So I completely stopped watching lectures and just went, I just basically for audit, um, I did all the questions and all the sims. So I still did all the sims. I didn't like save them for the weekends or things like that. Um, but yeah, so I just completely got rid of watching the lectures and just dove a lot deeper into the questions was what my, what really changed in my brain was like, this is my learning material, not the book, not, not the, uh, not the lectures. It's all these questions. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing that changed. And then a little bit later, I started um, printing out your notes, uh, on paper. And I would, I like would hole punch it and put it in a ring, three ring binder. And then, uh, that was great because then I had your notes, but then I started handwriting my own notes onto them so that all of my notes were in one place. Um, and that also started really helping instead of just highlighting stuff. I was like yeah. writing down like, okay, I'm getting this wrong. This is why. And I would like explain it to myself on the, um, on the, my notes. I did use flashcards a little bit and we, and I'm sure you'll ask a little bit about that, but not, not as much as I used my, like, uh, my physical notes that I was writing. Um, and then let's see, I think I, there might've had another thought of something that changed when I, uh, I think that, yeah, but th- those were the big things that changed was just like my focus on the questions was a lot great oh oh and sorry i eventually so like i said i had been work i would work then i would go to school and study for two hours and then i would go to class and i eventually it took a little bit because i was like i don't want to like i don't want to study first i don't know i really don't know why i didn't want to because i like getting up early anyway it (laughs) it it wasn't that wasn't the problem but i eventually was like no i'm just gonna study first and that also completely changed my study process was studying in the mornings that study two hours, then work, then go to school. That, that also completely changed my my process there. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So just for the benefit of anyone that's going to listen to this, yeah. Try to describe your, your actual process. If you open up a lesson and you've got, okay, this topic has 40 or 50 MCQs, would you actually answer all of them or as you got through halfway, did you kind of think start seeing the third and fourth version of the same types of questions? And so you wouldn't go through all of them or what was just your, your actual process for learning a lesson based on the questions? That's, um, that's a good question. So pretty much it was a mixture of trying to understand the questions, but also getting through the questions. Um, with, so I once I finished audit, uh, that was when after doing audit, which took me about three months because I was still kind of figuring myself out. Uh, FAR, BC, and Reg, I only did about six to seven weeks on each of those, and so what I did for FAR uh, was slightly different for the other two. I did two modules a day in Becker, um, which was quite a lot. <laughs> I, I don't sometimes I'm like, how did I keep that up? Um, but so that was how that was how I went into the questions was being like I need to finish this many questions or this these two modules today, um, if possible. So that, uh, but then once I was actually in the questions, 
um, I would, you know, I did all the questions. I didn't, I, uh, I didn't do all the sims. Uh, I eventually stopped doing the sims really either, but I would folk, uh, I did all the questions in each module. Um, I didn't care if I got them wrong. Um, I didn't care about like the percentage that I was getting complete on each uh, module on each section. I was just in my mind it was this is just I'm just exposing myself to every single question that Becker could think to expose me to, and then my mastery of the questions is actually coming through my re daily re review and my quizzes and my audio notes and all that stuff. That's where I like am really that's where it's really soaking in. But really, my study sessions were just about exposing myself to the questions, just like seeing all the topics. That was pretty much my my approach. Okay. If so I if it was a topic with a lot of calculations, would you – so you look at a question, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I have no idea, submit it, and then try to kind of reperform it to make sure you understand how it's actually working or not yeah. even that much? Um maybe not like extremely deep like i wouldn't go like i never did like you know, i usually wouldn't spend more than like two or three minutes unless i was like really confused about something but usually it was like about a minute to two or three minutes depending on the question uh just doing it and if i didn't understand it like you said i would just i would guess and then i would take notes on it and then move on and the great thing was that with a lot of the content, if you see it once, you're probably going to see it again. So th it, that also helps it start clicking like, okay, that, so that's how you do that equation. And you just, repetition just helps it really sink in. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, so you would, you would do the set of, 30 or whatever, like the re mm -hmm. you do 90 minutes or so of new material, new questions, and then what, 30 questions of all previous topics? Yep. I, um, with audit and FAR, I did, uh, well, with audit, excuse me, I did 30 questions for my daily re review. But with FAR, BC, and REG, I just was a little bit too slow to get, because I liked to, in that half hour, not only do the questions, do like 30 questions or whatever. But I also really liked to go through them all to see why I, if there's things that I was continually missing. Um, so I did 20 questions a day with FAR, B, C, and REG. Okay. But it was because I wanted to be able to kind of dive into them. And I was just a, I was just a little bit too slow um, to do the 30 questions. Well, no, part. that's yeah. – that's, I mean, that's the most critical part, right? Because – Answering the whatever twenty or thirty questions is good practice. I mean, it's that's what you'll do on test day, but up until test day, really, you're still learning as much as you can. You know, mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out these problems so that they're not a problem on test day. And so, yeah, if you're going to do the set of re-review questions, it's more important to have enough time to answer the questions, but also really understand why you missed the ones that you did mm -hmm. and so yeah it's it's much more beneficial to do 15 or 20 questions and carefully review and re-perform the ones you missed than it is to just go through 30 questions and not look at what you missed yeah and th and that's exactly why i didn't stress too much about diving really deep into the questions the first time i saw them uh which is why I think I was able to kind of get through material fairly quickly because in my mind I was just like, I need to see the material. And then my re-review every day is where I'm actually like really learning it, like deeply learning it. So that, I think that helped me go through the, the exams pretty quickly in uh, doing it that way. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so you said you, were, you would do the Sims, but then just a minute ago you said, eventually I kind of quit doing them. So yeah. when was that and how did that work? Yeah. So with audit, I did everything. I did all the questions, all the sims, but I stopped watching the lectures about halfway through. And then, um, and that took, and I did about, it took me about three months uh, to study for audit. And with FAR, I was like, so the re a big reason why I stopped doing sims was because they're very time consuming. And 
I had a big motivation to pass the CPA exam by April this like this this April that we're in right now, because if I pass within a year of being hired at I Bailey, I got a five thousand dollar bonus. Um, nice. So that was a big motivation to me. So I was like, how can I trim my process to where I'm still really effective and efficient, but I can you know get through these exams fairly quickly. Um, and so I stopped doing Sims for FAR, BC, and Reg until I always did a two-week review. I always would get through the material in about four weeks, get through all the questions so that I've seen all the, all the questions they could ask me. And then I would do Sims every day for the two weeks leading up to the exam. So I didn't completely cut out Sims, but I just I wanted yeah. to get through the material quickly, and then I would... Uh, kind of use the sims as a way to uh to uh cement my uh my learning yeah okay so when you get to that two weeks would you how, how would you go through the sims would you just okay day one of my two-week review here's seven sims from module one and then tomorrow seven sims from module two or did you constantly do random set, sets or how'd you do that that's uh that that's a really good question because um so what I did was I had seen in somebody's post in the forum at some point I don't remember who it was but they said that they focused on the Sims so I really appreciate the uh what's it, like you have like a PDF that shows uh these kind these questions will be asked with multiple choice if it says this it could be multiple choice oh, or yeah. sim if it says this, it will be a sim. So what I did is I would go through my little note, my notes that I had from, from you, and I would uh, find all the topics that, if they were tested, they, were, they would be a sim. Like, they were guaranteed to be a sim if they were tested. And so what I would do during those two weeks is I would first study all the, try to study all the topics that were guaranteed to be sims if they were tested. And then if I made it through those, then I would just do random random sims and I would do about I tried to do about three to five sims every day I wasn't perfect with sims my main focus was the multiple choice every day um, so if I didn't quite get you know three or five sims I wasn't too worried but that was my strategy with the sims yeah okay um, so you're referring to the the blueprints yeah you would just pull yeah, up so you the, had like a PDF to help with the, yeah like to help yeah, with the blueprint yeah, it, yeah yeah Yep. Okay. I actually use the blueprint okay. quite a bit. Yeah, so would you also kind of just read through the topic about you were about to study just for kind of that extra content? Yes, I context. I, I, yeah, I completely forgot to say that. Sorry. It's been it's crazy how fast you your mind is just like, I'm free. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore and Oh yeah. So like I've I'm sure I've already forgotten a lot of things, but uh yeah, I, when, once I had your notes, the physical notes, I would read that section before jumping into the into whatever I was studying that day. Um, I took a lot of things from the podcast and from the forum, so my my strategy is just kind of like a a mix and match of all those things put together. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, during the day, would you do a lot of the mini sessions? Or and what did you use the most, or how did you do that throughout the day? Yeah. So the thing I by far used the most, and I was like almost perfectly consistent with this, was the audio notes. I listened to those every time I was in the car alone. So that added up to probably like, depending on the day, like a half hour to an hour, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of listening to the audio notes. Um, so I would get... I would get through those fairly quickly, um, depending on the section. And then uh, I, it's going to sound bad, but I did really good at first with like audit and far with the using my phone, like the quizzes and the, and the review notes. But by BC and by reg, I was really struggling to, it was just so hard to, to take myself away from work, even just for like a few minutes, because like I said, I have ADHD, so like 
getting focused enough to work effectively sometimes took a few minutes and then like taking myself out of that to like go take a walk or or do a quiz sometimes was like the last thing I wanted to do <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. but I did, but I did try it. Like I, what I did is, um, I made a little, uh, not a spreadsheet, like a little note page that had like a task, like I could check off tasks as I was doing them. Uh, I, I use Evernote, uh, and I would say, okay, I want to do five mini quizzes today and 10, 15 pages of notes. And I would like split it out to like, okay, at nine o'clock do a quiz at 10 o'clock, read three pages of review notes or something like that. And I, tr I tried, like I wasn't perfect with that, but that was what I would do throughout the day was that I would, five quizzes was like my main goal. I know that's not very much compared to some people, like some people I've heard on the podcast, they're doing like 20 mini quizzes a day. And I was like, I, I don't think I can do that. But, um, mm -hmm. but that's awesome that the people do that. But yeah, my main goal throughout the day was, five mini quizzes, some reading of the review notes, and then definitely I always listened to the audio notes. That was my bread and butter with the audio notes. I always listened to that. Yeah. Yeah, audio is just so helpful because you can be, you know, doing it while you do other things. Yep. Uh, I had a question in there. So you said you listen to the podcast as well. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's one of the uh, – everyone who's just been really successful with this, it just – once I talk to them – it just kind of sounds like they, and I know you were in the forum a lot too. So it sounds like you just kind of immersed yourself in everything. You mm -hmm. were either, I mean, you're doing the morning studying, obviously, but then you're either uh, listening to audios when you're in your car or listening to the podcast. You're trying to do the mini sessions. So it's just kind of on the top of your mind all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think that's a good, I don't know thing for people to realize it's like anything this kind of has to be your primary focus in life to a certain yeah. degree if you're gonna do well at it and so it just helps or because it costs so much money it takes so much time you might as well do anything you can for every extra advantage yeah it's basically how i looked at it exactly um so yeah when, yeah. when would you listen to the podcast just after i would listen to it at work sometimes i would listen to it oh, while okay. i was working um <clears throat> I, yeah, I think I probably got really annoying to my wife because I was just, <laughs> was, I was upset. Towards the end, it was starting to like wane because I was just like, I need to be done with this. Um, but yeah. for the large majority of it, I just like, I would talk to her about it every day. And I was like a preacher at school, you know, like I, I told everybody that they should buy a super fast CPA. And I was trying to convince everybody in my master's program you should be doing it now. You're not going to want to do it later. Like I was just like, I was, I, and I know, I, I know, uh, eight people and, and there, maybe there's more who were listening that have bought super fast CPA because I was just like, no, you need it. Like you got, there's no other way to study. Um, so yeah, it was just, That's I'm awesome. sure I was, I'm sure I was annoying, but I was just, I kind of became obsessed a little bit because I just, especially once I passed audit, I was like, oh wow, this actually worked. Like, I need to keep doing this. And so, uh, but yeah, it was always on the yeah, forefront so of I, my mind. And I, I was going to ask that. Um, so you get the, you know, you watch the pro course videos, you see how to actually, you know, really do the study process. And then I was going to ask, like, was it a few weeks into it and you could just tell things were working really well? Or was it really passing the first section that was the big confirmation that, Okay, this yeah, this works. I felt like it was working before I passed my before I passed audit um because I had taken like 2 months to pass the sorry, to get halfway through the audit material when I was doing it my weird hybrid way and then mm -hmm. uh it took me 3 weeks to get through the rest of the material. Like it just cut it okay. like in half and I was like and I felt the same. Like I felt like my understanding was the same or better which it was better eventually, yeah. but like, I was like this, even if I'm understanding this, like, not as well as I think, <laughs> at least I'm getting through the material really quickly, which was a huge bonus to me. 
And, you know, I know that supervised PPA is not necessarily about getting through the material quickly, but if you're doing it effectively, you're probably going to get through the material quickly, which is what happened to me. I just, I felt like I really hit my stride, especially after passing audit and knowing that it was working. Um, you might remember on the forum, I posted that thing where I was like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do two modules a day, and I'm going to try to pass by <laughs> February. Is that too ambitious? Yeah. And you and some other people were like, oh, man, like, uh, that's, that is pretty ambitious. And I didn't quite hit that just because I, uh, I had to slow down just a little bit. But, but anyway, yeah, it just uh, – when you're effective, it flows, and you just hit your stride, and it, you just keep going. Like, I, I didn't stop. I, I was one of those people who I started studying the next day after I took my exam. Um, mm -hmm. And I probably should have done this, but it worked out that I didn't. I didn't even restudy at all for what I had just taken. I was like, I'm going to trust that I pass because I don't want to waste any time. And so I would just, I just went straight into it. Yeah. Hey, you passed in March though, right? I mean, you yep. finished in March. I, March 31st. So only like yeah. a few weeks past what I was hoping I was going to do. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, that's quick and you weren't, so you would study in the morning, so you were able to do normal stuff in the evenings for the most part? Yeah, so my situation it is, so I started studying on, on my birthday, which was also on the first day of my master's program, great birthday. Um, and uh, once I finally started doing that, like really changing my process to do, to do that, I would study two hours in the morning, my first semester of my master's, I was doing part-time work, full-time school. So I had five classes. So I would work, then I would go to school and study. And, but then I flipped that, and then I, st I would study, work, and then go to school. And then I would have homework, but um, I've always been, like, pretty decent at school. Like, I just, not that it necessarily comes easy to me, but I know how school works. So even if I'm not, like, the best, at a class I know how to do it so that I can pass mm -hmm. like it's not that's never been an issue for me um so I was it's amazing that I was able to do work master's CPA and I legitimately still like I would occasionally still go do stuff with my friends I did stuff with my night with my wife almost every night I always got to see my kids mm -hmm. every night like just the efficiency that super fast CPA brought me was uh, invaluable in that, in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and, and like you were saying before, when you kind of have a sense or you just, you know that your daily process is working, it's a lot easier to stay motivated and do it every day. Like mm -hmm. if you're spending four or five hours a day and it just feels like, nothing's really happening and then you go and you fail sections mm -hmm. that's when it gets that's when people give up because it's like well there's no I, why would i do this yeah i'm spending 40 hours a week studying in addition to work and it's not working like yeah so yeah exactly yeah and the, and the great thing was that it still worked when i flipped so that in the semester that i'm still in right now um i've been working 40 hours luckily they were nice at, I'm a, I work in taxes, but luckily they were nice and they letting me work 40 hours because I have my master's and, and things like that. Um, and, you know, I was still able to working, working full time, doing three classes, I was still able to do it. It just, it helps. It helps so much. Yeah. I, I don't know when I was, was I, when I was in my master's, um, I'm pretty sure no one was even attempting that. It was just kind of viewed as you're not doing this and the CPA or like nobody does that. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm wondering if that's like changed or how did you, uh, were a lot of people in your master's trying to do their CPA at the same time? No, there, um, I think there was one other woman uh, in it that was, she had already taken, so... I do think it has changed maybe a little bit because there was one person in my master's program who had already finished all of them. And I was like, good for you. Like he was, I was 
super yeah. surprised by that before he'd even started his masters. Um, but, uh, and then there was one other lady who, uh, she had already taken one and then she took, she took the other three kind of alongside me. But other than that, I feel like I was the one who was kind of like pushing people in my program to be like, Hey, we should just do this now where we have two classes that are totally focused on on audit and then on far, like why not do it right now? So I was pushing a lot of people to do it. Like one of my friends, she did all of the exams like at the same time as me and uh and she passed all of hers as well um but yeah i the thing that really motivated me to to i was i was already planning on studying for cpa uh started when i started my masters because multiple people in my firm uh they were just like man it just it sucks you should just i wish i would have done it sooner i wish i would have done it sooner and I just was like, well, if I'm going to have a year of misery doing another year of school, then why not just tack on the CPA exam so that when I'm done with my master's, I'm like done, like totally done. Yeah. So that was, that was my way of thinking. And I tried, to, I tried to get other people to think like that. But a lot of people are like, eh, like I'll do it after. Uh, right. know, like, it's just, it, but to me, it was really important because I have a wife, I have two kids. And I'm like, I am not wasting more time. Like, I need to get this done. Like, there's no way. So, <laughs> um, so now, are you still? Are you finishing your master's and you work full time? Yeah, I. Um, so, like I said, the way I did it, I did five classes my first semester. I'm I'm finishing up three classes right now, and then I have two classes left in the summer. But right now, yeah, I've been working full time, and I'm gonna continue working full time for the rest of. Gotcha. Yeah. So does but life just even even that much? Does life just feel easy now that you're not oh. even, you don't even have to study anymore? <laughs> it's like it's glorious, honestly. It's I it doesn't yeah. even feel hard. Like school is a a joke. It's not really, but it it feels like that, you know. Uh, mm. And it's great because I'm I'm the kind of person who loves not I don't love waking up crazy early, but I like to wake up early so that I can start work early, so that I can get home early, so that I can actually do stuff in the evening. So uh, now that I'm done with CPA, the, at least the exam, I still have to do the ethics and the state law exam. Uh, but now that I'm done with that, like I, I start work at seven, I get done at three, I leave before anybody else, I get to work before anybody else, and then I'm just like free. It just it feels amazing because before, yeah, I would start work at like nine because I was studying, and so I it was yeah, big big difference there. Um, so did you pick some big reward or trip to go on for yourself or you and your wife? Uh, so we did a few things. We haven't done anything like crazy big <laughs> yet. Um, but actually this is kind of a funny story. My wife, she was expecting me to pass because I had already done well on the others and I do taxes and reg was my last one. So she was like secretly like he's definitely going to pass. So I didn't know, but she had been planning with my friends and their wives that we were going to go out to a restaurant, but I thought it was just going to be me and her and they were going to be there. And it was going to be like a surprise and we were going to, you know, do fun stuff. Um, and, uh, but I, but my firm gave me a gift card, a hundred dollar gift card to the cheesecake factory. And I was like, we should go there instead. And she, but he already planned the whole activity. And she was like, ah, uh, I don't know. Like, are you sure? She was trying really hard not to give away the secret. And I was just, I kept pushing. I'm like, seriously, like, why would we not go to the Cheesecake Factory? There's no, I really don't understand. Like, and I, she, she was like, okay, you're just making this impossible. And so she told me about the, the surprise. Oh, um, <laughs> you ruined so it. I did ruin it. <laughs> um, but, uh, so that we did that. And then, um, uh, I also went to my favorite band is Metallica and uh we went to they had a global premiere in theaters of their new album that just came out mm -hmm. and so I went to that and like we've done I've done some small things um and we had like a little ceremony for deleting the Superfast CPA app off my phone uh <laughs> and I'm and going did you to say okay no more talking about CPA <laughs> yeah Pretty much, I still talked a little bit about it just because I 
I'm not actually a CPA yet, but, yeah. uh, and then I actually am planning on like in the summer, I have all of my, uh, all of my notes from super fast CPA and my, and the one book that I got, uh, and I'm going to go burn all of my super, all of my CPA materials cause like for fun, but yeah, we haven't done anything super yeah. big yet, but yeah, it's, it's just been so nice to be done. Yeah. The relief is like the biggest reward. Yeah. It's just, you just can't even describe how good it feels yeah. to just know you're done. Yeah. I was expecting to be like jumping and whooping and screaming. And I just, when I found out my score, I just felt like, Oh, I didn't even say anything. I just was like, I can't believe like it's over. It, it was only seven months total that I was st- that I started studying till I finished my exam, but like it felt like an eternity. <laughs> but it felt so good. Yeah, yeah, and even though that's a short timeline, I mean, it is a long. You know, six months in real life is a long time. Yeah, so it's a yeah. it's a long time that you're studying every day, mm-hmm. not really <clears throat> taking days off. Yeah, it's a long yeah. time still. Yeah, but at least you were passing and getting it done. Yeah. Like I said, I've talked to a lot of people where this spanned like five or 10 years where they were, you know, yeah. Struggling with it. Yeah. Um, you said Metallica. Oh yeah. They're my favorite band. What's your favorite album? Uh, ride the lightning. Oh yeah. So that's, that's a legit answer. (laughs) I mean, you're, you're like a young Metallica fan. So yeah. How did you get it? How did you get into that? Older brothers? Uh, I am, I'm the oldest, but, uh, my dad, that they're his favorite band, but he never really like forced them on me growing up. Like I didn't really know mm-hmm. who they were, but when I was in high school, he gave me a CD of like some of his favorite songs, not just Metallica songs, just like metal, just just songs. And uh, Harvester of Sorrow from from Injustice for All and Sad but True from the Black Album were on there, and I just like. I loved those songs and that kind of just started the journey. And like now they're, I've, I've listened to every song, every album. I bought a cassette of the newest album, 72 seasons. I just, they're, they're my favorite bands. And I'm actually, actually this is kind of another, so kind of another celebration for CPA slash, uh, finishing the masters when I finish it in August, my dad and I are going to, uh, there a concert of theirs in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, in September. Awesome. So yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, about that's that. cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan myself. Growing up in the, I don't know, going to high school when I did, like in the 2000s. I'm, yeah. I still I listen to a lot of metal. Oh yeah. Only when I work out at this point, not really <laughs> in the car with my yeah. kids or anything. But yeah, um, yeah, love metal. That's funny. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I guess so. One of my last questions would be: What did you what did you do different on the weekends? Did you try to study a little longer, or what was it? What did you do on the weekends? So, uh, at first, with audit, I would go to the library and try to study for like four hours. I. Um, and I would mainly, I would try to mainly focus on, I would do my normal two hours and then I would do a, try to do what you say, like a two hour session of the Sims. And I tried to do that for audit. And then I, uh, it kind of, there's a lot of, there's not a lot. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but there's multiple things that I think work for a normal person, but I just could not sit there for more than two hours usually. And even that was pushing it sometimes. <laughs> just, I just like, so like, like example, for example, the cram session, I tried so hard. Like I was trying so hard to do it. Cause you know, I knew that that was part of the super fast strategy and I just, I never mm-hmm. could make it. I couldn't even make it past four hours, like, and let alone mm-hmm. six or eight hours. So I, I just kind of, I had to look in the mirror and be like, this is not how I function. So I, I stopped doing extra studying. I just would, I still just did two hours on Saturdays and two hours on Sundays. I did start going to my work on the weekend because I had a key and nobody else was there. So like, it was just a place to study in peace and quiet. Um, like, um, 
and that's what I that's what I studied every day was at work because I could not study at home with my family. It was just like there's no way. They're just two. No, yeah. I have a two year old and a ten month an eleven month old, and it's just like no way. There's no way I'm gonna be able to focus unless I wake up at like four, which I was not willing to do. <laughs> so I just went to work mm-hmm. and I did the same thing on the weekends. Yeah, not not too much different by the end, honestly. Yeah, and that's I mean just overall an example of there's the whole strategy or the study format and all the strategies or whatever. Um, but as you get into it, or I mean, anyone, as someone gets into it and things start to click, you can make little tweaks or, you know, there's been people on the podcast that have said they took the weekends off, which, Mm -hmm. um, to me, you know, it's like, I can't make that a blanket recommendation. Yeah. Cause I don't think that's the best thing for most people, but if you're passing sections, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't, you know, once you get a process down, um, whatever that is, if it's working, you can obviously keep doing it. So yeah. And yeah. It sounds like it worked. Yeah. That's how, that's how I felt like there were even days where I'm like, you know, I didn't have a very good study session today. And like, you know, I beat up on myself, but I was still passing sections. So I was like, you know what? It's, it's working. It's fine. Um, the one I was most nervous about was FAR. And then the one I was most unsure about, like it could go either way, was BC. <laughs> that one I got a 75. It was like, whew. BC, by the way, yeah, BC is really hard. Uh, whoever's listening to this mm-hmm. podcast, don't let people mm-hmm. fool you. Like that for me was my bane like i i had just come from passing far and i was like i got this i just passed the hardest one and i was like i'm gonna do bc in three weeks and then i started doing it i was like there's no way i'm doing this in three weeks and i extended my study process another three weeks because it was just like there was no way that i was going to understand the material that quickly because bc was just really hard for me um so yeah don't take every take every sec take every test seriously that's that's a that's a tip i would give yeah definitely um and it's there's a lot of people that for whatever reason just one of the sections is they're extremely hard for them and a lot of times it's bec or if someone never really had an auditing class or never i mean especially never working in audit then audit can be really hard because it's it all sounds exactly the same, but there's obviously all these little differences. Um, well, yeah, I think we've gone through everything. So as far as your tips, like you just said, what last thing I always ask, what are your top three tips for people still trying to figure out their own study process? I would say the first tip would be if at all possible, and I know that not everybody does this, but I would say the vast majority of people would benefit from this. Study in the morning. Find a way to make that your first thing that you do. Because for me, like, that actually, towards the end, this was not the case because I was just so tired. But for the most, for the majority of it, that actually turned into my favorite part of the day was studying because I just felt so productive and so, I felt like I was, really accomplishing something like it was and Mm -hmm. and that start and then and then you've mentioned this hundreds of times I felt like the rest of my day was whatever I did no matter what I did even if I didn't listen to audio notes even if which I always did but even if I didn't even if I didn't take a quiz even if I did nothing else that if that two hours in the morning was golden then the rest of my day was perfect like it was and that that just once I got into that rhythm and uh, and it kind of along with that, find a place where you can be just get into that zone. Like for me, I had to go to work every day, even on Saturday and Sunday, just to have a quiet place to study. And if your house is like that, even better. Uh, but yeah, find a place where you can make a golden two hours every morning happen. Um, so that's probably my first tip. Uh, second tip, we kind of just mentioned this. Don't be afraid to modify the process uh, for yourself. Like, I think Superfast CPA is amazing, and I'm very grateful for what you've created. 
because it's just so comprehensive and so helpful. And the and the great thing about it is because it's so comprehensive in so many, like with audio notes, physical notes, quizzes, like so many different ways that you can use super fast CPA, find something that works for you and, and uh, apply it. Like it's, this process is not about being a super fast CPA clone. It's about taking an extra tool, which is super fast CPA and using it to improve your, your process so that you can pass the exams because that's what it's all about in the end. It's about you passing the exams. Um, and then third thing, I would just say um, consistency is key. Like I've talked to people throughout the process that they start studying and then they kind of fall off and then they start studying again and then they kind of fall off and you just have to that's that's why that is exactly why the CPA exam is the horror that it is because people don't take it seriously enough um, or if they do take it seriously they are not effective which is why which you know go see my first tip <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah take it take it seriously the more serious you take it and the more you work on perfecting your process personally, the faster it's going to go, the better it's going to be just, um, and be consistent. The most people, the vast majority of people do not work well with studying a few days and then not studying a few days, studying a few days and not studying. Like it's just not effective. It's not effective, and yeah, I think that's really what super fast CPA helped me to accomplish for myself was efficiency and effectiveness, and that was really what it was about for me. Yeah, yeah, and going along with that, it's uh, it's all kind of related. I mean, when you're to your second point, when you spend the majority of your study time working on the questions, which is what you need to do on exam day, you're just so far ahead. Where, because other people that they don't realize it, but if you're spending eighty percent of your study time just kind of zoning in and out of a video lecture, and that doesn't even really translate to answering the problems, anyways, it's just largely such a waste of time. But mm -hmm. you're taking the same amount of time away from stuff you'd rather be doing. Like you're spending that time, and if it's not effective, like we were saying earlier, it's really hard to stay motivated and be consistent. But then also studying just aiming for a two-hour main study session is twice as easy as mm -hmm. aiming for a four-hour study session every day mm -hmm. it's just really hard to find four even three three or four consistent hours a day but with some little adjustments either to your schedule or just when you go to bed or whatever pretty much anyone could find two hours a day mm -hmm. and uh and then when your when your strategies are more effective it's just basically about like stacking advantages on or layering advantages on each other throughout your like your routine your strategies how you spend time i don't know exactly yeah so. yeah it uh uh i something i want to say and i don't say this as being like look at how amazing i did i say this as like I hope this can be hopeful to people. If a, if a guy who's doing his master's, like I passed them all in a four and a half month period. If I can do that, just about anybody can do it if they can figure out their two hour effective study session. Like seriously, just about anybody can mm -hmm. do it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that um, this is the product. Like obviously you need your main <laughs> study course you have to have yeah. that, but anybody who doesn't know about super fast EPA, I pity them because <laughs> man, I can't imagine doing it any other way. Well, yeah. So I, I mean, I appreciate you saying that and you, yeah, you did, you crushed the exams. So congrats to you. I'm glad you found us and I'm glad it was helpful. Yeah. I do have to say one more thing. I did have a, an exam day. Uh, what's the word? I, to I totally forgot the word, uh, ritual. Um, I wore the same mm. shirt to every exam 
and it was a Metallica Ride the Lightning shirt to every exam. Uh, and I passed. That's so funny. that you know that that's actually why I passed. Was that's actually why? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what everyone needs. Their favorite band T-shirt, or maybe that exact one. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That that's all. That, that, <clears throat> yeah. All right. So that was the interview with Logan. I'm sure you found that very helpful and motivating. And he just had a lot of really good tips. Again, overall, you just get to hear exactly what someone that passed in five months was doing to to pass in two hours a day. And they were extremely busy otherwise. So it lets you know that it's possible. Also, strategically and tactically, what Logan was actually doing. It's just a very valuable interview. And collectively, I say this every time, these interviews... If it's you or someone you know who's working on their CPA exams, these interviews collectively, if you just listen to them, you know, whenever you have downtime or when you're driving, these are the most helpful free resource available anywhere for figuring out a highly efficient study process for your CPA exams. So please take a second, leave a rating and review in the podcast app where you found this, or leave a comment, you know, like it if you're watching on YouTube. All the things that you know helps spread the word. Most of all, you could directly share this with someone you know, whether it's a friend or a coworker who is also working on their CPA exams. So thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.